Welcome to Earth Juice. Coming up this week, billions of cicadas, renewable teeth, mountains of faeces and stunning solar flares. The east coast of America is bracing itself for an invasion of cicadas as, after spending 17 years underground, Brew 2 is set to emerge. And Jean Kritsky from the College of Mount St. Joseph in Cincinnati estimated that it should be a bumper year of between 10 to 30 billion. Related to grasshoppers, cicadas spend most of their lives underground as nymphs, emerging into the open when the soil reaches a temperature of around 63 degrees Fahrenheit, when they then transform into adults. The US has various cicada species, and many of them emerge every single year. But Brew 2 is what is known as a periodical cicada that emerges every 17 years en masse from the ground. Entomologists suggest that the reason for this lengthy 17-year cycle is that it makes it very hard for predators to predict when the cicadas will emerge. Once they're out in the open, they're hardly subtle though. Their calls reach an incredible 100 decibels. That call is to find a mate, and once they're mated, they lay their eggs in trees and then die. The nymphs, once they hatch, burrow back underground for another 17 years, until the cycle begins again. Publishing their findings in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, a team from the National Taiwan University studied American alligators, hoping to find out exactly how they regenerate their teeth. Alligators use and regrow around 3,000 teeth in their lifetime, and the team studied how, after losing a tooth, the alligator's dentine forms a bump containing stem cells and proteins, which activates the growth of a new tooth. By identifying the activator proteins and the stem cells that start the stages of regeneration, the scientists hope to apply this process of tooth renewal to humans. Professor Chen Ming Chuang added that based on these studies, it may be possible to identify the regulatory networks for tooth cycling, and that this knowledge might enable scientists to arouse latent stem cells and to restart a renewal process in adults who have lost teeth. This May marks the 60th anniversary of the first ascent of Everest, and each year hundreds more climbers attempt to make the summit. But after seeing the huge amount of human faecal waste generated on the mountain, Seattle-based climber Gary Porter thought that it was about time something was done to tackle this unsavoury problem. Annually, the porters carry more than 12 metric tons of human waste down the mountain to be dumped into open pits at the lower elevations. However, a group of Seattle-based engineers are working on a solution that will also provide energy benefits to the local community. At the beginning of May, they completed a design for a biogas reactor that will take the climber's faeces and convert it into methane gas. That gas can then be used as a cooking fuel in the Sherpa's villages. Construction could start as early as next year, and if it's a success, the Mount Everest biogas project would create the world's highest biogas reactor. And finally, the sun has had a busy couple of days, releasing four enormous solar flares over just 48 hours, each flare the equivalent of a billion hydrogen bombs. Also known as coronal mass ejections, they're associated with huge eruptions of matter from the sun's atmosphere, and they're capable of sending billions of tons of charged gas and particles into space. That's this week's juice. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'm gonna leave you with some incredible NASA footage of those solar flares. <laughs>